guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what it's like getting into tech in 2024. And one of the things that I've been doing over the last few months is I've been working with mentees in order to help them secure roles. So far, I have helped nine individuals receive offers, some of them from the likes of places like Amazon, Microsoft and American Express. Now, it wasn't simple. They have finished a bootcamp that they've done and they've got a job. They really had to work for what they needed to achieve. And so that's what this video is gonna be about. I'd like to take a moment before getting into this video, just to say I am gonna be making an announcement about my mentorship program. And so to just carry on watching to find out more information about that. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So the first thing that I want to talk about is expectations. So one of the things that I think a lot of people think that they're going to do when they get into tech is they're going to get a job straight away and they're going to get a six figure salary. For the majority of people, that just isn't going to be the case. Yes, you can work towards a six figure salary, but it's not going to be something that you get straight from a bootcamp. And so we need to drop that expectation of what it is that we're going to be getting for. Whether it is that first role that you take a little bit less and actually focus on the environment of, okay, is there an environment here that I can really learn from? Am I going to grow? Those are the most important things that you need to do when you're a junior. Focus on finding an environment that you can absolutely thrive in and that you can get the best guidance from. So I would like say a normal salary range for people getting into tech is for apprentice roles, it's between 20 to 25. And then for like actual entry level positions, then it's between like 25 and 40,000 in the UK at least. So we are talking about UK salaries here. I aren't from the US, so I'm not sure what the comparison is over there for, for, for regular salary range. But in the UK at least, you are looking at between 20 and 25,000 for apprenticeship roles and 25,000 to 40,000 for entry level positions. So that's just something to consider when you are looking for a role. You are going to get the really high salaries initially it does take time but one thing to know is that if you go somewhere good and you learn from that and you you know you are surrounded by really 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 good mentors and, and leads and seniors then you can grow really really well and so you can almost double and triple that salary in like a few years time if you really dedicate yourself one of the other things is that Six figure salaries aren't really common unless you're in London or if you're in big company or if you're a contractor. But for general like salaries like outside of like the like capital, that typically is quite hard to get to. Um, it might change with the way inflation's going, but it's still quite hard to get to for the majority of places, especially up in the north. So that's just another expectation that you need to be aware of when getting into tech. It's not always going to be these really high salaries, and actually, you really just want to focus for the first couple of years in learn in finding somewhere that you can learn properly. The second thing we're going to talk about is just making sure is this something that you actually want do you enjoy working as a developer because there's a lot of other routes that you could go down that aren't as difficult that will make you money if it is money that you're, you're, you care about such as sales such as finance there's other routes that really really pay much better than working as a software engineer and if it is tech that you're interested in but it's not necessarily coding there are other avenues as well so you could be a product owner you could be a business analyst you could be a technical project manager you could go into devops engineer you could be a cyber security specialist there's a lot of different things that you can choose to go into rather than just going into software engineering and actually they're probably more likely to find roles for them because there's a lot of people going into software engineering boot camps at the moment versus other types of boot camps that there is less people going for them but the market demand is increasing for them so that's just something to think about as well the next thing i'm going to be talking about is don't focus so much on your cv yes it's important to have a nice looking cv and i think it's very very relatively easy to get a template to do that but like rewriting and rewriting your cv isn't going to be the thing that gets you that job continuous practice of building projects and small projects as well look if you look back at your what you've done in your like boot camp or 
whatever it is you've done before could you easily rebuild that by yourself just things like that is ways to grow your skills so you can then talk about it in an interview and as well as talking about it in an interview you can also add it to your cv and so whenever you do a project you can be like okay i can add that as my next set of evidence okay i can add that as well whereas when you don't have a lot of evidence in your cv it doesn't matter how you write it there's just not a lot there that you can work with so i'd really encourage just to focus on building up that evidence and whenever you have that evidence there you can just put pop that on your cv it just adds to your case really next let's talk about the elephant in the room data structures and algorithms so this is probably the most scary thing for the mentees that i've worked with trying to pass the data structure and algorithms part of technical tests and so one thing i would say is just to focus on the most common things that are likely going to be asked and the most easy things that you can initially learn. So the first thing I would say is to have an understanding of what big rotation means, what time complexity means and what space complexity means. I would then have a look at what arrays are and what hash maps are and what queues and what stacks and what linked lists are. And then I would try easy questions of those. And I wouldn't even contemplate doing any of the other things until I could do those. And the reason why is because these are probably the pillars of everything else. And they're also most likely going to be the things that you're going to be asked about in a apprenticeship level or a entry level position. And so I would really, really recommend you just focus on them initially. And then if you feel comfortable with them, then think about doing either medium questions on those or actually trying something different. I would also say that you can get roles without these, but if you are targeting those big companies, then you probably do need to learn data structure and algorithms. Someone who I think is really, really good at teaching this is called Neatcode. I will link his stuff back down below as well so you can see what he does. I really, really recommend you check out his channel. I think he puts a lot of effort into teaching how to solve certain questions and how to go about it and think about the actual problem solving rather than just focusing on getting the problem done. The last thing that we're going to be talking about is just being patient. It does take time to get that role and sometimes you might be ready and it still takes a little bit more time to get there. For example, I had a mentee who was ready pretty much four weeks after we started working together but then it's taken another eight weeks after that for him to land that role that he wanted and he was ready and he really tried and he put a lot of effort in it was just the way the market fell and the roles just weren't coming up when he wanted to and he did get accepted to a couple of roles but they weren't necessarily right for him and so he waited it out a little bit and then got a role that he really really wanted and and so sometimes it really is just a okay well yeah, I got this role, but actually it's not the right thing for me. And and he really learned from that experience rather than just rushing in and getting that first role. He thought, no, actually, this isn't going to be good for me. I'm going to wait it out and find something different. To be fair, it did sound a little bit dodgy, so I don't blame him. But yeah, I'm really glad that he held it out and then he got an apprenticeship that he really, really wanted. And that's all about basically what I think of the tech landscape at the moment and now we're going to be getting into the mentorship program so the mentorship program that i do i have an opportunity for three people to come work with me who are currently looking for their first role so if you are looking for your first role and you have been looking for a while and you've done either a boot camp or you've been self-taught and you are struggling to do the things necessary to find that next role i'm here to help you we will be having one one to one weekly sessions where we will be looking at where you are at the moment so the first thing that I do is I will assess where you are at and what it is that you need to do to get to that first entry level role we'll talk about potential avenues for you to go down and then we will set a strategic plan together to help you get to where you want to go we will do pair programming CV reviews mock interviews whatever it is that we feel you need to do to get to that next level we could even do soft skills analysis as well if you feel like that's something you like to once we get you to the level that we think is ready for applying we will continue just doing what it is you're doing whether you know it's building projects practicing and practicing all the while applying to those roles and get preparing for any interviews that you get 
and that will be it until you get your role. If there is anything that we need to change throughout the process, we will. It will all be a continuous process of basically figuring out what it is that you need and how we can get you that. If you want to apply, the link is down below to fill in the form for applying. And if you're watching this and you're thinking, I don't quite qualify for this. I do also do consulting for individuals and businesses where it's more focused around agile DevOps and technical consultancy. So if you are someone who's already got that job, but you just want to level up in those areas, I also have that and I'll link that down below as well. And that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I post weekly content on my YouTube and on my blog, and I also post daily content on my LinkedIn. Goodbye.